education, and real-world knowledge about the voiceover industry. It's the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Welcome back to the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. Uh, I'm Linda Bruno, and you know it may seem obvious that this person should be on the podcast more regularly, but he never has any time, so I got seriously lucky this week. Yes, because your schedule is all over the place, but it's our in-house. Well, first Come of all, on, let's, let's keep going now. <laughs> he owns the freaking. Don't have times for long introductions. <laughs> <laughs> he owns the freaking studio, Digital Waterworks, but he's uh, the in-house producer for the Voiceover Gurus demos. Dave Goldberg, hello. Hey. How are hey. you? Thanks for <laughs> having me. It's good to be back. I don't even remember the last time. I didn't did get this. that. <laughs> there goes my uh, my watch. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a couple of years, I think, since you were on the podcast. Yeah. Um, but it turned out to be a good week because you had some things shift around. So we, yes, we are in the same studio building. We are in different studios. But like, if you're watching this on the YouTube channel. <laughs> You're over there somewhere. <laughs> my hand through the window because I'm <laughs> I'm basically on the other side of our main vocal booth. Uh, we just thought it would be easier to record like this and kind of cool too because I like you have your 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 setup there yeah. with uh, Pro Tools. So Pro Tools, that's your main um, editing software. Yeah, there's a long story behind my uh, relationship with Pro Tools, and uh, it started out out of necessity. Uh, because back in the day, uh, when there weren't as many choices, you would get agencies calling you and they wouldn't say what kind of DAW or digital audio workstation are you using. It was more of like, what version Pro Tools do you use? <laughs> so it was just assumed that you were using Pro Tools. Um, and, you know, in the early days, we're talking 25, 20, 25 years ago, um, there were very few choices and Pro Tools was, you know, one of the first out there. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the short story uh, as to why I use Pro Tools. But if I was starting over today um, using a digital audio workstation, I probably would not. I probably would jump onto the Adobe, uh, Adobe Audition, which is part of the Creative Cloud uh, family of products. Now, you have, well, a couple of the other editors here at the studio use that, right? Yeah, in fact, I use it too. I use Audition at home because I don't have a Pro Tool set up at home. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I just, you know, out of necessity, found it to be a better choice for my, my use at home. I have a very small home studio. It's not nearly as capable as what we have here at Digital Waterworks. So um, in addition to many of my other hats, I also do voiceovers myself. And I use that home studio just for auditions or for actually, um, I don't usually start projects at, at home, but yeah. I might I might do a project and then the client reaches out after hours and says, are you able to do a pickup uh, or repair or, or an add on to something we had? And if it doesn't have to match exactly, because there's no way yeah. my, home, my home studio would never match here. Um, but if it doesn't have to match, I'll use the home studio and I use Audition. But here at the at the studio, I use uh, Pro Tools. Gotcha. Yeah. I've, I've talked about this before on the podcast that I use Pro Tools on because it was the first thing I learned. Right. Um, and I just know all the shortcuts and it's just easy and I'm too lazy to try and learn something else. Um, but yeah, because Pro Tools is like overkill and plus it's kind of um, outdated in some. It's dated. It's dated. You know? my, my nickname is Pro Stools. <laughs> um, and listen, I, I'm not endorsed by them, so I could say that. Right, right, uh, right. Yeah, I, you know, it it gets the job done. Yeah, yeah. I, I doesn't, I don't really have any obstacles with it. I think, uh, there, I think audition is a better value. You get more uh, bells and whistles. Where to have Pro Tools do the same thing that uh, audition does, you'd have to spend extra money on plugins, um, a lot of which comes with audition out of the box so mm -hmm. and it is and it's much more affordable it's a more affordable uh product but when you think about voice talent and what we have to do which is not much i mean simple mono single track recording unless yeah. you decided you wanted to go in, into production and and mix things but would you ever record in stereo your voice no no there's no need to uh, record your voice is mono um what comes out of your 
your voice is mono, uh, mono meaning single channel. Mm-hmm. Um, once it enters the room and it starts, the sound waves start bouncing around the room, then it actually becomes stereo, but the voice doesn't become stereo. The right. sound, the sound, the ambient sound in the room becomes stereo, but that's not what you want to capture in uh, in a demo, which we're going to be talking about today, or or in a finished product either. Um, mm-hmm. They, you know, it's it's mono. It's one microphone. Um, I think there's are, some confusion. Some people, some people think they need to record in stereo. Um, no. and I'm always like, no, that's not. And I know there's some coaches that are telling people to do that too, which is. Never heard of that. I've I know. never heard of that before. Um, I mean, not to mention, not that it really matters, but a stereo file is twice as large as a mono file. So mm-hmm. if your mono file was one megabyte, a stereo file is going to be two megabytes, but there's no left and right to your voice. So mm, there's right. no, and, and not to mention the majority of microphones, especially the microphones that voiceover people uh, are using are mono microphones. There's only one output. Uh, on that microphone, even if it's a USB microphone, um, it, it's just a single element, a single pickup, um, not a left and right. There aren't two elements in there capturing gotcha. the left and right side. There are microphones that are stereo microphones, and they literally oh, yeah? have they. Oh yeah, they have, but they have two XLR cables. They have a left and a right, uh, um, but not for use in in our we don't industry. Have to worry about that? Yeah. No, no, that's for people who are doing like music recording or field recording that would be a, a, a stereo microphone. So people, um, you know, they know us as performance coaches. That's our focus here at the voiceover gurus. And it's like a little, little well-kept secret that we also produce demos. Uh, Cause there's a lot of um, coaches out there that, you know, do promote that as their service, like their main right. service, or it's like a demo house or a demo factory. Right. Um, we are definitely not that, that is uh, it's a very much a customized situation, but we've, God, the one that you finished today is fantastic for one of our students. I cannot wait to share it with him. But yeah, I wanted to talk about the whole demo process mm-hmm. and what you think. Okay, you as someone who also casts voices, when you're listening to demos, what shouldn't you do on a demo? Oh, well, there's a lot of stuff that you shouldn't do. Um, there's probably... Um, like where where do we, you know I I would I think it's even more oh, whoop let let's we're not going to edit this but I, I think we should actually start because a lot of the people who are watching this or listening to this podcast may not even know what a voiceover demo really is I mean mm. they you know okay sure. you know it's it's your voice it's recorded but like but what is it and and so let let's just start there first just as a little primer. Um, so a demo or a demo reel is something that should show off your voice and it should show off your capabilities, your range, your diversity. If you have diversity, not everybody does. You know, there are some mm-hmm. people who, you know, they're just straight ahead narrators and and great for you. But if you are a, a voiceover talent that has the ability to have range and you can give a deep read and you can give a high read and you can, then that, you know, the, the best of should be featured. It's your best of album. It's your greatest hits <laughs> album is what, is what it is. Um, which, which leads into what should or should not your demo, you know, what are the problems or things that make a good demo or a bad demo. So um, length, the overall length, the right, the runtime mm-hmm. of the demo is, is something that's very, very important. Uh, none of what we're, what I'm going to talk about today is is law. Um, I don't right, this is any, your mm-hmm. yeah. This is just sort of experience and just knowing just industry standards. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the demos that we produce are between sixty and ninety seconds, a minute, a minute and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a few reasons for that. Number one, you're not putting full spots on there. So even if your demo is made up of actual um, material that you have been paid for. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it wasn't created as part of the demo well then your then your pieces are typically going to be 30 or 60 seconds uh long broadcast length but you don't need to put full start to finish uh spots on your demo uh nobody has the time to listen to six seven minutes of of demo material right or the patients or the patients right and they're getting a lot you know you have to assume that they're getting many submissions, not just yours and two or three others. Assume that they're getting 50 or 100. 
you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so so the overall runtime is important. And again, I think the sweet spot is 60 to 90 seconds. If you talk to most engineers or producers that cut down most for people, you'll probably get the same consensus. Um, mm-hmm. I, I haven't searched the web, but I'm sure if you typed into uh, Google. Yeah, that seems to be the. Mm-hmm. How, how long should a voice out dome be? You, you're going to see about 90 seconds. Um, so the other things you want. So we talked about variety, right? Mm-hmm. Versi- versatility. You want to show your your dynamic range. Um, if you have a, you know, if you're a very up person, but you can also do a serious read, mm-hmm. you should you should show that. I think it's important to start with something that really grabs the listener mm-hmm. uh, out of the gate. That may or may not be your best example, but it should be one that really grabs them. So mm-hmm. I would not start with, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the quiet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, it, the, those are not the one that is, that's that's just asking somebody to hit stop and just go off to the next uh-huh. uh, submission. Right. Um, so yeah, you know, get something if if it's got some cool sound effects or some great music in the beginning, you know, like really catches you your attention. Mm-hmm. You know, assume that they're they've listened to five others that really blew, you know, and then they're getting to yours and they're about they're about to go to lunch. You know, you want them to start listening to yours and go, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa what's this? Uh, you know, uh-huh. and and once they're on that hook, once the fish is bitten the hook, now you got them. You know, so your next one should be pretty strong as well. Your third one, the third one is where you can sort of take a chance. If you have a, if you have a mellower read, usually you want to, you definitely don't want to finish with the mellow, mellow read. No. Um, well, unless, unless it's your weakest of the, of the blot, you know, mm-hmm. um, another thing, you know, there's a lot of psychology involved here. Assume, even though they tell you never to assume, assume yeah. that the listener uh, or the casting director or the agent assume they're never going to get to the end of your demo, yeah. Um, because they may not. Like, yeah. They may not. They may not even get past ten seconds. If you're lucky, they'll play the first ten seconds and go, Whoa, "Well, now we found the voice we need." There's you know, mm-hmm. and you're done. But um, you know, conversely, just I wouldn't put your best one last because there's probably a ninety percent chance they're yeah, not. Yeah, nobody's going to make it. Not going to get mm-hmm. there. Yeah, yeah not, not at least on the first round. Maybe maybe if you make it into the the final three and they're really getting down to the nitty gritty and they're playing, you know, their their talent A, B, and C, maybe then they'll play the full demos just to see what's really there. Um, mm-hmm. But listen, you don't know what they're looking no, for. No, no, we don't. We can we we take our best shot, but your your demo, the first one you make anyway, should be commercial demo because, like you're saying. We want to showcase what range you have, if any, at this point in right. your career. Um, but sometimes I get students will be like, oh, my friend's a friend's a musician. He has a recording studio. He's just going to do the demo for me. Mm-hmm. And I don't agree that that is the best route to go because I don't feel that unless you know about voiceover or you've mi- ever mixed voiceover demo that I don't feel that just anybody can mix a voiceover demo. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, there's. There are two parts to the demo. There's record. This is also assuming somebody doesn't have actual recorded content to use that they're creating the demo entirely from scratch. And yeah. most of most of the students that go through voiceover gurus don't are from scratch. Yeah, are from scratch. So so there really are two. That's a two prong question that or two that you're you're bringing up. Like you know your friend's studio. You know it's okay to record the actual spots in your friend's recording studio if they have decent setup and they get a mm-hmm. good sound, um, and you're happy with the, your delivery and you know it's a it's a true DIY project. Then that's fine. Um, but addressing your your comment that you made about putting the demo together, um, so let's say you have five or six pieces now, five or six spots that yeah. you want to put into the demo. Uh, no, I, I agree with you. That should not be done by uh, your friend with the studio, unless that friend is a producer of commercial content, and right. they and they know, you know, what to, because there are a lot of things that go into making putting together the, the demos, and right. it's it's not just like putting, you know, this 
five pieces into Pro Tools and then just chopping them up. And there, there's a lot of, um, you know, we mix them, we master them. Um, we we change EQ and compression to make it sound more broadcast, like it actually was on the radio or mm -hmm. TV. Um, you know, we craft them. There's a lot of, and, and with craft, I mean, skill and, you know, the artisanal touch. Um, <laughs> it, there, there is a difference, you know, there's a difference between a, a loaf of Wonder Bread and something made in an artisanal bakery. Right. Um, and that's it. You know, we, we're that bakery. We're not the, the Wonder Bread factory that's pumping out loaves of white bread. Um, those but demo that you mentioned demo houses, there are demo houses that literally yes. just do that. They'll send us your demos and in 48 hours, we'll kick you back your, your demo for however much more money than it should cost. And, um, yes. and, and go with God, you know, I'm, I, I'm getting more and more students that are coming because they've had their demos done at another production house. I know. A yeah. Fortune. Yeah. yeah. But I'm listening to the demos and a lot of them are like overly produced where there's too many whistles and bells and, and the voice is drowning. It's not, you know, and we got to hear the voice. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's um well again some of that has to do with how they're mixed now in, in uh, some cases we don't do the actual mixing of the the voice and the music that's given to us already done like if it was done in your friend's studio and mm -hmm. and they mixed it well we can't undo that you know the bed is already right. made so I can't roll back the sheets and and you know peel it back um, but there are a lot of demos that we get here through, that you're coaching people. Uh, or list is working with, and we just get the raw voiceover file, just the, the voice by itself. And right. then I will actually create the, what I call the ISOs, the isolated spots, the individual spots, you know, the spot for Nike, the spot for Nissan, uh, and so on and so forth. I'll choose the right music bed. I'll choose the right sound effects uh, or the most appropriate for that spot. And then I have the isolated finished version, which is the full spot, the 30 second or the 60 second. Mm -hmm. um, that the student can use as well. Well, that they should have. And and, and I, actually we should, well, we should talk about that. Let's let's put a pin in that for one second. Um, <laughs> so now you've now you've got the five, uh, the five or six isolated, separate, uh, standalone pieces uh, that are now going to become part of the composite. And that's mm -hmm. going to be that 60 or 90 second um, uh, demo. Um, and those are now mixed, but we now do things with them just in terms of fading out and even knowing where to cut, like how much of a spot right. to use before we cut out uh, into the next one. There, it's not a formula, you know. It's not right. oh, every spot is twenty seconds until we hit this the, the sixty second mark or the right. It's not you. You have to. That comes from experience. I mean, I've I've been I've been doing this more than thirty years, but I like I say thirty years because I don't want to make myself sound that fucking old, you know. So, <laughs> uh, but but uh, you know, it, 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 with that experience comes knowledge, and it right. also com comes feel. You know, I, I'll I'll listen to it and listen over again. I mean, you, you've you've come in the studio, see me working on these things. Yeah. I'll close I'll close my eyes and then I'll say, yeah, this this we've had, this is enough of this spot. It's time to get to the next. Mm -hmm. one. You know, that's what I internal in, do internally, um, and I don't actually say that. But <laughs> now your background, I think, is really helpful because you're a musician. First off, you've been a musician since you were a kid. Um, and then you worked in that industry as well. So I know when I hear your demos, because I'm a music lover and I have an ear, I mean, not a musician, but I can tell that you you know how to place, like there might be a, a flourish of some instrument here or, you yeah. know, and that's, it's like a work of art in a way, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I do approach um, the creation of demos differently than probably most people do and because of my background in music uh i i hear i i don't care what at the stage that i get these recordings in i don't care what the spot is for or like the dialogue the narrative i turn the voice into uh a musical instrument so i'm listening to it as uh -huh. if it's a saxophone 
that's, um, that, that's that's not to say I don't listen to what it is. Obviously, right, if, it's right, a, right. if it's a spot for a hospital for the cardiac program, I'm not putting like, you know, me, rock me, 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 mega death behind it. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I will listen to it. I'll, I know I'll, I'll I'll read it. I'll read the script. I know what the content is and I know I have a pretty good idea of what kind of music I want to use. But sometimes it's not music. I mean, you know, recently I did one. It was uh, I think it was a mock spot for for Nike. And it literally just started with heavy, you know, running. Yes. Um, and then the sneakers. So it started with like, like that. Um, and then it kind of went into the sound of uh, sneakers on, on like in the forest, you know, kind of crunching. And it was more of a sound tapestry. But mm -hmm. even that to me was musical. You know, I thought I, I was yeah. hearing it as an orchestra, as, as something that was evolving. Um and again, not not to tip my own hat, I don't think most people are putting together voice or over demo. Certainly not the Wonder Bread factories that I mentioned. They are not doing that. Right. Um, so that that's what that's what differentiates, you know, let's say a, a really good demo. It's something that there's some care and skill. I don't do 10, 15 of these a day, you know, no, no. I, I'm doing a couple a week, three, four a week. So uh, luckily I'm busy doing other things and and I yeah. and I I handle these demos you know when they come in um, it's, ours is more of a boutique approach with all of this yeah not a factory you know. at all artisanal yeah. artisanal it's artisanal I like that word <laughs> I I do love uh the musical aspect of it but it's like the the music supports the voice which yes. is being showcased and it's not drowning out the voice, it's which is not, extremely important. Right. It's fighting it. In fact, I will oftentimes mix um, a demo. I'll mix the voice higher than mm. the music than I than I would if it was an actual broadcast spot. Mm -hmm. um, because we are trying to feature the voice. Right. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. so the music will be there. But like you said, to support it. Right. So, right. Yeah. Be a nice, uh, not a, not, I don't know. It's the way that it's... Um, it's laid out really comes out beautifully. And I, I think that has a lot to do with your, your ear, your musical so, ear. Thanks. Um, so, you know, we put a pin in the whole ISO thing. Yeah. So it, it is, it is important. So you're going to have your 60, 90 second composite demo. That's your reel, right? You're going to have that, but it is really important to have those isolated pieces. Um, so if you are having demo material, demo content created by a third party, make sure that you have access to that. Uh, and the reason if it's not obvious, um, is that you may see an audition come through online for uh, a voice that sounds like X and you're like, oh, well, that's me. Mm -hmm. um, but you may not have time right then and there to record a custom audition. Maybe they don't even want a custom audition. They might just say, send send your best example of you sounding like a horse yeah. to, to this, you know, respond <laughs> to this. And you're like, holy shit, I have, yeah, I have that spot. I have me sounding like a horse. So you can go in and send them just that ISO, that isolated spot, individual spot. What and kind not, of commercial is this? It's, 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 it's horse food. <laughs> um, but you, you may, you may right. have a spot that, that you've got it, you know, Oh, sure. Perfect. I'll just email them this, you know, mm -hmm. Hey, Mr. Mrs. Casting person. Uh, I have a spot that sounds like me, uh, you know, me as a horse, here you go. And then mm -hmm. they don't have to listen and trudge through the 90 seconds of stuff. Right. That's not appropriate. So there you go. That's, that's, that's one reason why, and obviously it's just, why not have as much as you can have, but that's yeah, because sometimes people want to rearrange the order, you know, and they want to put it into like a voice Zam player. Oh, yeah. Or some people can create a player like Wix comes with a little player that you can, you know, embed into your website. Right. And then you can decide because maybe you're like, no, nah, I like this read better or whatever. It gives you that freedom. All right. Like like you said, with the players, you know, it's kind of like a little playlist, right? So you track right. one, track one could be your composite demo and then track two through five, six or whatever will be your isolated individual oh, ones. And so, yeah, you, de you definitely want to have have access to that. I know that um, the, the, the prices range very greatly for demo production, and I'm not going into that because, you know, to each his own and whoever wants to charge what they want to charge. Yeah. But you just do need to make sure that you're comfortable with the fact that you should the old days, it was like rent a studio and a producer and spend two hours and get coached for a demo. That's how it was back when I was starting out. 
And now, you know, that is our, our approach is way more organic where, you know, Alyssa and I will work with you and we will have you record everything if you're remote. Um, and we do it over a period of time. So that way we can get <clears throat> the best read out of you, as well as something that we know that you can duplicate um, on your own and not need to be coached with. But um, yeah, that's, that's that's one thing that I like because I don't have to listen to all the garbage. And when you <laughs> when you guys give me the uh, recordings, it's like clean. here here here's the silver plate of you know yes. here's the filet mignon. <laughs> Finish the meal. <laughs> jazz it up, jazz right. it up for me. I know it's a cool process. So, do you have you ever heard a demo that's like really really bad that had like oh, bad yeah. characteristics? Sure. Well, as a producer, I yeah. get a lot of really bad demos. So, what's um, like a no no? What's a no no? Well, uh, just shitty music. Um, you know, if you're gonna if if you're gonna put music uh, in your demo, spend the money or just spend the time uh, researching where you can get good quality stock Don't music. Don't steal music, right? Don't use popular music. I mean, for a demo, if anything, I think it's not that it would be illegal because you're, it's for a demo purpose. But so there's not a. I don't think the copyright issue would come into play there because you're not you're not doing anything with it you're not rebroadcasting yeah. it but i think it might be distracting you know if um like you couldn't put it on youtube if you did that because well you know that you definitely couldn't do that but i'm saying like if, if you were mocking a spot for uh uh, uh, uh oh gosh um a so lawnmower <laughs> and and you use rolling stone start me up yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> And to me, as a producer, I would that would just distract me. I would just be a. I'd wonder, wow, how did they get to use that track, and <laughs> and, and who did they know at the Rolling Stones camp that let them? Right. It's just, it's just, just don't. There's no point. Yeah, it's not going to do anything to to help you get work. Um, what do you think just, about when people slate their own demos? No, it's not necessary. Right. I mean, you've got the demo. You see the it's, person's name. It's coming in the email. It's, uh, you know, it's probably the file name has got it. In. It's not necessary. Um, the, the old days, you know, when there was tape, you would do that. <laughs> um, we're, we're well beyond thinking of uh, <laughs> that. Um, but getting back to music, uh, you know, there are a lot of places. And I mentioned, you know, buying music. You don't have to buy music. There are plenty of really good sources of stock, free yep. stock music. Um, you've got like audio blocks is one that comes okay. to mind premium beat. I don't think premium beats free, but they have really good music. Uh, pond five is phenomenal, but also be based. Um, and then if you are using, uh, Adobe audition and you're in the cloud, the creative cloud, um, which is a, a monthly or an annual subscription that comes with, um, access to stock music and oh. stock, uh, sound effects as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. That's, that's another added bonus. Yeah. And so that's worthwhile looking into. So there are a lot of, I mean, if you Google stock music library or royalty free is the that's keyword royalty. Want. Yeah. Royalty free stock music. You could even, you know, no charge free, just see what comes up. But if it sounds cheesy to you, it's cheesy. It's going to be cheesy to everybody. Right. Um, it should be, you want to use high quality music. You're, you're a high quality. Hopefully you feel your voice is high quality. Um, so don't degrade it with inferior music. Keep everything, you know, top shelf. Um, if your recording didn't come out well and it's distorted, um, it just doesn't sound crisp. Do it again. You know, mm -hmm. we're not talking, you, you didn't record don't put it on your demo. Don't put it on your demo because it's just a poor reflection of you. So I'm, I'm telling you, these are things that you asked, you know, what, yeah. what have you, what have you heard in, in, in poor quality demos, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, somebody sends me a demo and their voice is like not recorded well. Like to me, it's like, do you really, do you care? You mm -hmm. must not care about your own voice. If you, if that's what, like perfect analogy. I'm the man of analogies. If you know me. Um, you hire a black limo, black car service, you know, stretch limousine to come to your house to pick you up. If the thing is like got a tire missing and, and, and the, the mirror is hanging off the door and uh, but 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 the driver comes up and he says, oh, hi. Hi, Dave. How are you? Come on. I'm, I'm ready for you. you. You'd be like, oh, yeah. And you'd be looking at the car and be like, eh. so, you know, the driver is the voice. 
but right. but the car is the demo. You know, it's like what the f- yeah you know <laughs> yeah. Well, these yeah. days, I think some people. Uh, someone just asked me about it yesterday and said, "Can't I just scrap together a DIY thing and, and post it and send it out?" Maybe. And, I, and I'm like, uh, well, if, is that the impression that you want to give people? Right. I mean, in the, in today with the how many how many people are competing to do voiceover? It's insanity, and this is what you want to come out of the gate with. I, yeah, I would. I, would, I wouldn't go. Do it themselves. I would not go into this at all with the, with the "it's good enough" attitude, um, right? Because you are just going to be lobbed in with the masses. There are. Um, I'm not saying this because he produces demos, and that's what we do here. You know, it's it's no, not it's saying just, it to make money. It's just I mean, honesty. I listen. I so I when we're producing and we're casting for voices, we they come from all over. On rare occasions. I will use some of the online voice resources that are out there yeah. and, I'll, and I will listen to people's demos. But I say rare occasions because I rarely get past five or six demos. And at that point, I just throw in the towel because I assume the rest of this, I just don't have time. And I assume the rest of the stuff. Okay. I heard five shitty ones. There can't be any better ones out wow. there. And there, there probably are. I'm sure there are. But yeah. I, I cannot tell you how often. I mean, again, I rarely use those services unless I'm stuck. Yeah. And then when I am stuck, I go in there and I start clicking around and I listen to them. Okay, this is garbage. Next one. I literally get five seconds in. I go, nope, oh, this is junk. Next one. Wow. Nope, this is junk. And again, I mean, how how I don't have time. I don't have endless time to to spend listening to these these samples. Right. So so usually by five or six, I'm like done. And then I'm coming into your studio. And I'm like, do you know anybody who sounds like this? <laughs> because I can't I can't do this anymore. You know, um, I'll tell you one thing worse. I know, I know we're talking about demos and not auditions. But since we're ta- since I yeah. brought up the online you know websites. <laughs> Um, so if you're, if you're going to do auditions, this is, you've heard me, Linda's heard me say this a million times, but if you answer an audition from one of the online portals, uh, and you're, you subscribe and you're a member of the portal and they're looking for a voice, uh, with specific, uh, requirements or criteria, please don't audition unless it's like a pretty direct hit. Okay. Yeah. Like, like if, if they're looking for a female British voiceover 30 to 55 and you're a female who is 22 and lives in Kansas, don't, don't, don't submit the audition trying to sound like you're from London. Okay. <laughs> because the person needs somebody from London. They don't need somebody from Kansas sounding like they're from London. Who's, 15 years younger than what they're really looking for, because that's the kind of crap that I deal with all the time with those specifically those sites. I, I think will, people just think, well, I'm just going to send it anyway. What's the worst that can happen? It's got to be got to be. And yeah. sometimes sometimes I get the same person auditioning, you know, not back to back, but like I'll run it. I'll, I'll run an audition in May and I'll get a person who totally submits incorrectly. Yeah. Um, and then a month later, I'll run an audition for something completely different. <laughs> Say that the same person is giving me the audition for something totally different. And they also can't or not appropriate it's to play still... that part. It's like, oh. I, you want to blacklist these people. I wish there was a way to do that. <laughs> now, and this isn't even, we're getting off track with the demos. Yeah, I'm sorry. A question for you. No, um, yeah. you know, sometimes people will ask and say, how many takes do you submit? So, I mean, oh, I, for I an say, audition. Yeah. Like, what do you like to hear? I like to hear one good one, but I'll take two. Yeah, I'll take two. No but more. But the than second two. one needs to be different, right? Oh yeah, yeah, man. We, yeah, Linda and I both know, and I, you probably brought that up as a lead, but we 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 happen to know somebody who um, their second yeah. take is all. It's always the same as the first. Same I almost, I almost think they clone it. Yeah. But yeah, because sometimes in audition you will say, you know, submit as a cast when I'm casting, I may say. Uh, submit one one to two takes or no more than two takes or 
but again, that's a gift. If you see that as a talent and they're saying you could submit two takes, submit to, yeah, do it, submit two takes, but submit to really different styles so that you can show me that you have this range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this one person, you know, it's like well, there's, there's no a range. delivery. It's the same exact one. Because <laughs> there's no range, you know, no. If you don't have right. anything else to submit. Well, right. it makes sense. So as far as demos go, okay, I think we've covered a lot. You talked about the number of spots that you think fit well. Right. Um, talked about the process. Well, how long do you think it takes? How long does it take you to to mix a demo from? I know you kind of chop it if up. I, other yeah, stuff. I mean, for, if I if I just the full demo, like taking it from voice to the isolated to the composite, the yeah, whole, like take all your time together and. Yeah, I would say it's probably like a two to three hour process to really do the right way. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes I get lucky. Uh, a lot of it has to do, a lot of that, by the way, that time is not just me just putting music on a board, uh, you know, under a right. voice. It's selecting the music. It's going through, you know, and, and analyzing it. And again, you know, my internalization of like turning this into a symphony and like hearing the parts and what kind of underscore music would work well with that voice. And so there's like all of that. And I will spend a lot. I mean, I could spend sometimes 20 minutes to, to, could even be a half an hour on one demo mm -hmm. just to pick the bed, the music the bed, bed or, or the sound effects. Like the one with that Nike one we were talking about. Originally I was putting music in there and just every piece I picked that they put in there is like, eh. it, was mm -hmm. like it, it would have been good enough. It would have been fine. But it was, yeah. That's just, just the next level with what you did. Something just wasn't working. Something wasn't working for me. Um, and but then when I started to think about it, oh, wait, he's running, you know, like I, I turned this into a, I turned it into a very active action that took a lot of time to put together that, that spot probably took 45 minutes to an hour for me to actually create because I was now, I was really creating something, you know, mm -hmm. it was, I, I, it was the, I had to find four or five different sound effects. I had, had tennis in there. I think right. I put some basketball sound effects and it's not all just layered at the same time. They mm -hmm. kind of like, it's a tapestry. They kind of, move now, heading back to the actual music i've seen you at times where like maybe you want a certain ending of it you know because you when you download right. these pieces they come in different lengths sometimes there'll be a two minute one two minute version 30 second version and then there's pieces where you have to say wait a minute i needed to end so with the musical background i think that helps you to be able to yeah with the beats because that's usually what i have a little bit of trouble with myself but yeah i'll 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 listen to something and then i'll uh i i, I kind of frankenstein the piece together i'll do multiple edits i may take the two minute cut the two minute version um or whatever the longer version is mm -hmm. and i may literally slice that so i do what's called spotting i'll go through the piece of music and uh, i'll literally as i'm listening to it i'll just put marks uh, along the track at different points, like wh where the music changes, where there's a, a morph uh, of music, like maybe when it goes into the chorus. So I'll just put a, a, put a mark there. And then I go back and I literally cut it up into pieces. So now that two minute piece um, has become, for me, has become six elements. Oh, and and I'll literally move them around. Obviously, the ending is the ending, but like the middle parts, I I may move around because I like things, uh, especially if it's a dramatic read. Um, you know, you start the engine. <sighs> you know, I want something to happen there. I don't just right. want like you know, ding da ding da ding ding. You know, right. So I'll uh, so I that's how I approach the design it's more of like sound design than it is yeah um, than it is just dropping a music and that's why you know a demo can take me two hours to make uh for somebody because I, I am I'm doing all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. in there um yeah if, if you if you ever dissected or if somebody ever opened up my pro tool session and looked at what i did they would be they would they their eyes would bug out because it i'm i do i do a lot more to the yeah, it's not laying the track down and putting a voice over it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So the process is Alyssa and I coach you. We hopefully get some good. Well, we won't continue until we get good audio files. And now I have, I'm more diligent about making sure that your levels are good. I'm having students during the lesson, send me their audio so I can plug it into Pro Tools to see where your studio is at before we continue. And then I send it over to Dave. I clean up what I think will work after we've had some chats and then 
you then go into the process of creating these isolated each individual piece. We just did a demo where the gentleman actually asked for you to produce two additional pieces um, that we're not going to be because we're only making his demo 90 seconds. Um, so then you do that and then you send them back to me and then I listen to them and try to figure out in my opinion what I think should go first, second, third, fourth, fifth. You yeah. mix that together. Then I listen to it, make sure it's all cool, um, discuss, discuss if needed, and then boom. And I'm I'm simplifying it, but you know we try to keep it. That's pretty much the right. I, I, and I I do like kicking it back to you once once I um, once I create the isolated versions. I I enjoy kind of re-inviting your opinion into the process because I, obviously I could formulate my own opinion of which right. the the order of where mm -hmm. they should go. But you have much more experience working with that student or that talent at that point. I don't know them. I right. don't know their personality. So uh, I so typically, you know, to, to the people watching and listening, um, I'll create the five or six isolated pieces. I send it back to Linda. I go here, here they are before she even plays them for the for the client, um, for the student. I say, tell me what you think the order should be. And then she'll send it back to me. Usually I'm fine with it. I, I'll, I'll agree. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's spot on. Sometimes what you send back to me is exactly what I was going to do myself. Um, and on occasion I'll say to you, yeah, maybe we should just flip three and four. Maybe just those should mm -hmm. flip around and, you know, we have a little conversation and it, it happens. But um, th again, we're not talking about science. This is just more um, feel. There's a feel to it's, it. Yeah. It's feel. Well, the one that you sent me back today, you did you think the order was good? Yeah, yeah. I and and I and I thought that was um I thought it was a really good demo. And and you did you record that one in your studio or that no, was submitted? he did it in his own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was good. It was well, good. the first piece on it really is characteristic of kind of like his his sound, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of homey, you know, real guy. It, yeah, definitely, definitely had the guy next door kind of real, real mm -hmm. sound. I could definitely see using um, a voice like that in one of our productions. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So, well, this is great. This is so fascinating. I think the the music element is is so cool, um, and everybody gets a chance too to learn as well what what we do, what our process is, and it ain't no joke. This is definitely <laughs> customized for you. There is nothing is ever um, formulaic. With yeah, well, even with the music, I very I don't even know if I ever recycle, you know, one piece of music in somebody's demo and into another one. It's usually I I almost always start from a completely clean mm -hmm. slate and and approach each one from scratch. So a couple demos ago, you did mention that there was one student and you were saying I'm I'm hearing a lack of confidence in one mm -hmm. of the reads. And then I listened to it again. I was like, "Huh, it's true." So then I spoke to the student and we recut it. We recut the audio and now yeah. it came out fantastically because yeah, I wanted to be honest with the student as well to say you were not sounding, you know, as confident as you could. So it's good to get the multiple opinions because I think the new the newer demo came out even better. Yeah. It's a result. And, of it. and and one other thing, I think this is fairly obvious, but it's worthwhile mentioning is that these demos are not, you know, it's not a one and done. Right. Um, you know, we're going to do five or six uh pieces isolated pieces in your comp and hopefully your career progresses and you do a spot and you love the way it came out that could then become you know it can replace possibly add it, it can be added into your comp or possibly just you take out the weakest link and put that new one in there. So this is your demo is involved. It's a resume, right? And as mm -hmm. you get more job experience, you change your resume. So um, that's so from, a, from a technical aspect, is it because this has is starting to happen a lot where people will say, I like three tracks from my existing, but I want to add a few more. Now, this is stuff coming from God knows where. Well, that's that's a so cool. All right. Good point. So if if we're producing the isolated where we're taking the voiceover and then laying in music or sound effects and we have that full control, right? Um, of, we talked about the analogy right. of making the bed and pulling the sheets back. If we have that ability, it's great. Uh, but if we get a finished product, uh, a finished piece from somebody, and whether it could be an actual commercial that they recorded, or uh, somebody else or, produced or, the demo, mm -hmm. or, or somebody produced the demo, we can put it into the comp, but we can't 
remix it. I can't, if they say, oh yeah, here's the spot I did, but I'd like the music a little louder. No. Yeah. Change the actual, yeah. Right. So how that, do you make it work yeah. to balance with, how do you make old balance with new? Same thing. Just, it's just experience tools. Sometimes you can't, you know, that one spot is going to sound different, but yeah. listen, in the real world, if you had five commercials, real commercials that you had your voices on, uh, they're going to be mixed by five different studios, five yep. different producers. So there are they are going to sound different. There's no again, there's no rule. There's no textbook that says your demo should all sound the same. Right. There's no reason yeah. um, for that. And sometimes sometimes I'll actually purposely make something sound different because I don't want it to sound like it was all done in the studio, in that one studio by that same engineer so what those do you mean, are how other do you do that like what just, do you mean those are that that's in my tool bag you know uh you know <laughs> just di different level di different amount of compression um sometimes you know if the microphone they were using was was a very full range sounding microphone i may uh, i may roll off some of the eq so it thins it out yeah get not and that doesn't make it sound bad it just makes it sound different okay so, it's like changing colors, you know? That's interesting. Um, yeah. I'm so fascinated. By, did you know that my original dream was to become a, a music producer? <laughs> no. I wanted to mix albums. Yes. When I was a teenager, that's what I wanted to do. And I got too intimidated because it was such a male dominated arena, but I would listen to music. I would pick out every instrument I would do, which I still do to this day. But this, that's why I find this so fascinating because, you know, it really wow it's just so cool and hopefully people aren't bored by it because i'm fascinated but um it's a great process i have one final question for you what does it mean when you master something well mastering is typically the term is typically reserved for music production um, but it is the final stage um of processing or the audio process that's applied to a recording before it becomes the master which the master recording is is the the final recording. So you know, back in the day, uh, I mean, it's, mastering is still done. But back in the day when there was multi-track recording and you had the big reel to reel and you had maybe twenty four tracks of instruments, that those twenty four tracks were sent through a mixer, a big mixing console, right? And and it was mixed down to a two track stereo recorder when it. But that was still tape. And then it went from tape to like a master CD or the master um, lacquer record, which would press the records. So the stage just before it hit that master, just before it became the CD master, um, was called mastering. And that really was done by a mastering engineer, still mm -hmm. is done very often by a mastering engineer. Um, and it's the it's that final think of it as like just the final coat of polish hmm. on on a car you know on a car uh, automotive you know a car paint so uh, you know car goes through the factory the seats are put in the steering wheel the engine the wheels the tires there's a coat of paint put on but before it gets shipped out to the dealer mm -hmm. it gets that coat of clear coat that's oh, great. The that's the mastering. <laughs> Oh, okay. Sounds so technical. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is. It is. And it's a it's um it's really important. And it is very overlooked. A lot of um um a lot of bands today, because so many bands are DIY and they're doing it in their homes on on Pro Tools and and Logic and Garage mm -hmm. Band or whatever, they don't even know, they don't even realize that there is a, that process that's required. Um, and very often that's the one thing, uh, the lack of mastering is the one thing that really does not make the band sound like, you know, like really pop, like, 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 like yeah, it, it just doesn't give it the mm -hmm. pop. It's like, oh yeah, good song, whatever. But there's a reason why the song is just not like jumping out of the speakers, oh, um, interesting. because it wasn't mastered or it wasn't mastered properly. Mm -hmm. Wow. So cool. Yeah. Well, this has been incredibly informative. Thank you. I'm so glad that we got lucky this week that you were free. Yes. Uh, thank you for joining me, Dave. Always a thank pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And I hope everybody listening and watching got something out of this a little bit. Yeah. I, I don't know if you didn't, you're nuts. Um, but yeah, that, that wraps it up for another episode of the voiceover gurus podcast. We do have um, workouts 
Alyssa and I have been going the route of specialty workouts. We're actually doing one about food tonight. Um, and then we're going to be doing an improv workout, actually, uh, with Rebecca Haw next month. So, uh, you know, check out the website, voiceover.guru, find out what we're doing. And uh, thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yay. Awesome. I looked, I looked up a couple of times because I thought it stopped recording, but it didn't. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I don't know. Did you see a panic look on my face for a yes. moment? Yes. I, like, oh, I, I was like, oh, God. I, was oh, like, I, don't, like... I don't see the timeline crawling. Holy <laughs> shit. Thanks for listening to the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. Real talk about the voiceover industry. Learn more about us and get coaching at voiceover.guru.